What's up, y'all? So I filmed this episode down in New Orleans with Zach Keel, and I love talking to Zach. I think I learn a lot from him every time we chat, and this conversation was no different. Uh, the bummer here is that I did mess up the audio just a tad bit. Uh, so the mics we're holding didn't actually end up recording. They're just kind of props and decoration here, uh, which I think looks kind of silly, but sounds okay enough. Sounds good enough for me. Um, I enjoyed it. I love talking with Zach, and yeah, I wanted to share this with y'all. So I'll chat with him again in the future, and I hopefully won't mess up the audio that time. But for now, enjoy this one. I think it's a great one, and I'll talk soon. Maybe. No. Welcome, my guy. Hello, welcome to my studio. Welcome to your <laughs> studio. Yeah, the other one started with welcome to my palace, which is what I call my apartment, because it's not at all a palace. It's like in the middle of this like shitty complex. So my favorite thing to say when people walk up is like, yeah, welcome to my palace, my fucking estate, my palatial estate. Um, but I'm happy to be down here, happy to be down here in the, the dirty south. It's good Bye to you. have you back. It's not, you're lying to me now. No, um, it's always amazing having you. Ah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to say that. You don't got to lie to the people. But, cutting right to it. So, uh, <laughs> we always talk a lot about the business stuff or whatever, and I think really my my goal in these chats is to improve my own business and learn more from other people who are running businesses that interest me. And one of the things that we always talk about when it comes to business stuff is this Dunning-Kruger effect, which I know it's in your brain and it's percolating around right now. So, I went out and I finally Googled it. So that's, we actually, that's the graph, right? Yep, yep. Yes, we always kind of think we know what it means. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what it means? So I went out and I Googled it <clears throat> and yeah, this is going somewhere. So part one of this is a person's lack of knowledge and skill cause them to overestimate their own competence. So this is when you're starting out, you learn one thing about audio engineering yeah. and you're like, Dude, you think you know fucking I can everything. make it all. So <laughs> where was that point? Where does that start for you? Is that eighth grade <coughs> make a song? Like what is that? demo where what bedroom are you recording those projects in where you have that this is a great question we kind of talked about this last night a little bit too like we didn't like pinpoint that but i said something about how the first ep i wrote i was like i thought i was really good at what i was you doing you don't have to keep okay it's okay you don't have to um we live in so yeah like last night i was talking about that first, I, I think I showed you some of that bullshit too, like yeah, it, how King bad stuff. it sounded. Yeah. So I was like, at this point you have to try to take those, like those rose colored glasses off of like being proud of, I did this. So is it good because I did this or is it objectively good? But there is something beautiful um, to those. Like they are bad now, but they were good at the time. And there is still like a, I don't know. They're like looking back, there's something special to those mixes. And I, for me, it's when I look back at the old videos. It's like, <laughs> yeah. damn, this video stinks, <coughs> but it's one of my favorites <laughs> for a yeah. reason or another. Um, yeah, there's still a tiny part of me that's proud of that. But I guess, so I definitely, to, to go back to the actual topic, I think like one of my specific memories of that or instances of where like I'm aware that I was at that point. Yeah. Um, I started working at Guitar Center in like 2015, I think. And I remember I started out, so I play guitar, and I started out um, in sales in the guitar department, but I was, like, telling my mom, like, oh, I could be in pro audio, like, I'm sure I know more <laughs> than, like, all of the guys that are there, you know, because of what I do, and, yeah. you know, which was just the beginning of this shit, so now looking back, it's like, dude, you didn't know a fucking thing about yeah. anything back then. <laughs> do you remember, like, what was the... I like the physical space. So like we're in your studio now and you also mentioned you play guitar. Yeah. You're in a band called hollow city. Cool band. Uh, you guys do music stuff, which is always awesome. Uh, <laughs> that was the most BMO answer ever. <laughs> Shout out. Um, yeah, we're in the space right now. We're in a studio that is finally gorgeous. It is finally a space that people want to be in. Where is the first bedroom that you start recording in? Where does this adventure begin? <laughs> like I, everyone has that grinding <coughs> place that the, the origin spot. Yeah. So, it was the spare bedroom in my mom's house in past Christian, Mississippi. Ooh. Um, and we were, it was really still this band, but we were called to crown a king and it was like the, the worst 2010s <laughs> auto tune version of this band. So we we're all kids. I was like 15, 15 or 16. And, uh, our synth player at the time, like he gave me the <laughs> just straight twenty ten. Yeah, yeah. He gave me a torrented copy of Fruity Loops nine, I think, 
um, on my like PC, like my Dell E machine or some shit, like piece of shit with two gigs of RAM. Like yep. it couldn't do anything. Um, Dial up internet and all. He he gave me yeah free loops and like this weird little shitty interface, and just showed me how to arm the track so that you can play guitar through it and then click record and record mm -hmm. your guitar and then how to kind of move little drum samples around. So that was the beginning of it, of putting kick and snares together with some shitty little cymbals and then recording a, a riff over it. Yep. So At that time, did you have like any music out? Was that like your first time writing music, like being a producer that you sat in someone else's studio? Is <clears throat> kind of Yeah, I'd been in, in, in other studio. Well, another studio. Yeah. So our, we had an EP. It's not even, this was like before it was realistic for local bands to even get on like, Apple Music and mm -hmm. wasn't even Apple Music. It was iTunes. <laughs> Ninety nine cents a song. Yep. Good yeah. Um, so like that wasn't even a thing back then. It was bands who were just like selling their physical EPs yep. and demos and stuff at shows. So we went to. Um, we had these songs like kind of written that we would just like jam together, and we went and recorded them with this dude named Drew Ray. Shout out Drew Ray. If he ever sees this, I'm going to tell him like, yo, I mentioned you in this podcast. <laughs> um, so that was the, um, that was the first time we ever really recorded with somebody that like kind of knew what the fuck they were doing. Like we had worked with this other local guy, like this older dude that had like pro tools and he <laughs> mic'd up the drum kit and like, it just sounded like dog shit. Cause he didn't care. Um, but Drew Ray was like the first guy that like was doing kind of this style of production. Um, so I was like, fuck, that's really cool. Like how I remember his, let me not say that actually, <laughs> um, but I just remember, I remember thinking like, like that'd be really fun to fucking do. Yeah. You know, like what, what a cool life that is to just like tell your old lady, like, all right, I'm going to the studio. I've got this band coming in and like making a living that way. Um, so then whenever I, I got Fruity Loops and started, I started writing demos that we were still going to take to Drew Ray. Um, I was like, wow, this is, this is fun. You know, like maybe I could get good at this. What if I YouTube this, how to make this sound better? And it's, I'm still in that rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> like 10 years later, 11 <laughs> years later, I'm still yeah. in that fucking YouTube rabbit hole. <laughs> yep. That's a good rabbit hole to be in. Yeah. yeah. It's making me a little bit of money. So it's gotten, gotten you this far. It got me a new um, car. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> got you a car wash today for it. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a morning so far. Um, I think it's fun to reflect on those times though. And just how, yeah, how much we thought we had going for us. And then in hindsight, it's like, I don't know if 10 people ever heard that song ever for me. Yeah. It's a music video equivalent of like, yeah, yeah I spent all day working on this. I spent all night working on it. I thought that I was changing the universe <coughs> like overnight. It was going to hit the internet and light it all on fire. And then inevitably it drops and nothing happens yeah. and nothing changes. Yeah. How do you, yeah, what makes you stick with it in that, <coughs> in that moment where, yeah, I would assume that the first couple songs that you put out or work on are the same thing of maybe your friends like it, someone tells you it's kind of cool, but like, yeah, it didn't, it didn't do what you thought it was going to do probably. <laughs> Mental illness. <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, doing the same thing yeah. over and over again, yeah. expecting different results is insanity. Yeah. Yeah, we fucking still yeah. do it, so... I really don't know. It's like just it's life. Like what else is there? Yeah. You know, aside from going to try some new nine to five or, or something. So I don't know. I mean, the shit that's really fun is like, so anybody listening or watching like wasn't there, but like last night we were working on this song behind me and the moment where like, that's kind of coming together and like it, it's getting exciting like oh shit i can't mm -hmm. believe we just wrote that or yeah. wow that take was perfect and you feel them like the you play it back with like the right eq on the vocals and the right little you know synth pad texture or something and it kind of brings the magic out like that's that's the funnest part you yeah. know it's cool releasing that but there's never a rush from releasing anything like there is from like when you hear it come to life for the first time. That's interesting. So, and that's what I've always loved about um, recording with someone else or recording other people is like that excitement that I always got from working with Drew Ray or Brian Hood or, you know, just someone else that brought my music to life. That's what I always wanted to do for other people and try and like provide that same feeling. So like, I guess like at the bottom of it, like that kind of is the corniness in it that like I like that's what I like about doing this stuff. 
I just got a beautiful nostalgia when you said that. Yeah, my camera journey, I always kind of say it starts, uh, I take a semester off in college and I wasn't loving college, so I decided I was going to try anything and everything that was kind of interesting to me and a camera happened to be one of those things and it's the thing that stuck. Um, but somewhere along that path, or maybe even before that, I was learning guitar and I was I'm terrible at it. I can't, I'm not musical. It's not what I'm good at. Uh, but I learned to cover, uh, you know, <coughs> learning cover songs or whatever. And I had my buddy film a cover of me playing. It was a Ghost Inside. It was a uh, Dear Youth banger. Great song. But, Ghost Inside? Uh, yeah. Fuck yep. Yeah. Uh, but I remember filming that cover and it probably falls in the same category of like we thought we were changing the world and it was objectively bad. <laughs> but it's the same thing you're talking about of like, yeah, it's that feeling of how cool that thing felt and looked and was to me that I'm, yeah, I guess I never thought about how that is what I'm trying to pass on to someone else. Uh, right. It's really interesting to kind of pinpoint that singular moment of like, fuck, this afternoon yeah. is what I'm trying to offer another person. Uh, yep. That's really interesting. So it is the, <laughs> the recording process that is your favorite part. Move your mouse. Do what? Oh. Unbelievable. Jeez. Technical difficulties. Sorry, <laughs> folks. Uh, no, but it is the, the recording process that you love. It's the, like, yeah, I think it's interesting, again, for me in the video context, it's like uh, filming it is great, and then by the time it comes out, I've already moved on. It sounds like you're saying the same thing. Yeah. Of like, It's hard to appreciate the song sometimes because the real magic is this moment that happens last night <clears throat> for a song that no one knows exists. Half your band barely knows it exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm pretty sure like half of them haven't listened to it. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's still unreleased like in-house, like, yeah. much less to the world. Um, yeah, I think that's always a weird thing to try and grapple with and then try to find like validity in it. I was um, chatting with someone last night, and like, you know, we, we liked that video you did. And it was a weird moment of like, uh, I forget that there's a response sometimes because I'm trying to avoid the comments and the likes and all that stuff. It's <coughs> like, I don't know, it's not for me. It's not good for me. It, yeah. like, any, no matter what number I see or what comment I read, like it has a bad effect on me, whatever the number is. I'm like, if it's a high number, then I either am like, oh, it's just because the song was good. Or I think, it doesn't deserve that <laughs> or it's a low number. It's like, oh, I worked so hard on that. Or it's, you know, something else happened. Like, I don't know. It feels like I never take pride in that feedback. Yeah. And it's a really weird thing to, yeah, only have that good moment in this time where, yeah, even your band doesn't know the song yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, yeah. So we talked, started talking about being bad at it and thinking you're good as you keep growing. Then you get to this part <clears> where <throat> we are starting to be good at it. I think in the studio, I think, yeah. uh, it's still, I still feel like an asshole saying that I am getting better at video or right. that I am well, doing yeah. video well. Because um, imposter syndrome and we're never going to allow ourselves to think we're actually good at anything. 100%. And then it's that weird thing of, yeah, so the part two of our little definition here, my Wikipedia exploration, uh, is that our Dunning-Kruger effect causes those who excel in a given area to think the task is simple for everyone and to <laughs> underestimate the relative abilities. And that simple for everyone <coughs> made me laugh. Uh, because yeah, there are so many video things that are setting up lighting where it's like, yeah, of course it goes there. And <laughs> the first thing you said when we sat down, I was like, dude, it looks great in here. It's like, it's just lighting. I didn't do anything different. I didn't move anything. I just knew where to put the light and it is something I didn't even think about. It was obvious to me. Yeah. And he was like, oh shit, that's really cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know how, how to find peace with that sometimes. I, like it as we keep getting better, are we just going to keep thinking we're worse at it? Is that, is that the future? I think so. I don't know. I think on the, the Dunning Kruger, uh, scale or whatever, I mean, you start off with thinking, um, you obviously know very little yet. You're not really aware of that. So yeah. you think, you know, everything. So you start up here and then you have the valley, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like the, I think it's like valley of despair. <laughs> like it's so dramatic sounding. That feels familiar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've like, been there. That's where you're just like. actually there. <laughs> that's where like, you know nothing, you know you know nothing, like you, the imposter syndrome's a bitch, like yeah. you just hate everything. Um, and then I think as you learn more, you start to become aware that like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty solid at this. And uh, I think somewhere on the other side of that, valley is there's supposed to be like peace mm -hmm. um but if anybody's found that shit, <laughs> fucking tell me how because i mean yeah. even like I, I i feel like i hear stories about like some of my favorite producers that still feel that way you know it's yep. like or you talk to these guys that you kind of hold higher than you and like they go through the same shit so i'm like 
that's kind of bleak. <laughs> like, yeah. man, so there's never going to be peace. There's never going to be like yeah. just self confidence. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird, th- but, uh, that's what I'm aiming for though. That's yeah. the weird thing. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> uh, it's a goal. I don't know if I believe in, but it is one that I'm dead set on finding nonetheless. And it's, uh, I think, Lately, I've I've been trying to, so like the song that I've been working on and like this whole EP, I kind of created this mixed template um, last, like this past May, like April or May. And it's been like an evolving, um, you know, this template, I made some changes, turned into this template. And then I made some more changes and it turned into that template and uh, so on. But um, I think I've, I'm finally at a point right now where like I'm pretty content with how it sounds and I'm not really like chasing some like bigger more badass you know uh next like breakthrough uh mix Mm -hmm. on a song you know like I'm I'm content with what it is right now and most of my like heavy songs that I produce or write whether it be for me or for someone else kind of starts in that template and so I've kind of found peace in that where I'm just like, okay, this is my sound. Um, but I've also always been kind of weary of shit like that because mm-hmm. I don't want to be lazy. I want to give everybody their own treatment. However, that's just hell. Like starting from mm-hmm. scratch on everything and having to be a genius every single time a band walks in here. Um, so yeah, I've just kind of been at peace with this template right now and knowing like this is like how Zach Keels makes his sound. Mm-hmm. Um and then I played in the car and I'm, I'm so far this year, like since I made this template, I've not been like, man, I, I really need to change this. Or I really wish that mine sounded more like this other thing. Um, and that's the other thing too, is stop comparing. Cause that's, that's the big one. Yeah. Uh, there's like some say, famous saying about that, that I'll surely fuck up. But like, <laughs> uh, comparison is the thief of joy or something, something like yeah. that. Um, I believe it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I try not to do that, but that's just inevitable. Like, we always do that. Um, I'm still doing it. I'm just lucky right now that I feel like whenever I do compare, I'm like, I'm fine with this. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, there might be something better about mine. There might be something worse about mine. There might be something worse about theirs. You know, who cares? As long as nobody's like, man, this shit sounds weird, mm-hmm. then fuck it. Like, I did my job. <laughs> do you find your... So, you started off recording and it just let me make a song. Uh, do you find that that interest has kind of found different niches that it now lives in? So in the video world for me, it starts off as, let me make a music video. In the last six months, it's been, what is color grading? What are color spaces? How are colors work? What is color theory? <coughs> Getting into the, the minutia where I think it's almost more dangerous because now that I feel confident in the thing I first started learning, I've now taken on a second thing to learn for me to be bad at and be self-conscious about it. <laughs> so there's like this vicious cycle of like, even when I get to the part where peace would be, I You're just... like, what do I actually know? <laughs> yeah, I just pick my head up and see another mountain yep. and start climbing that one instead. Yeah. Um, has that been a, a trend you've noticed in your audio thing of, it started to make a song and now it's, what is the vocal <coughs> change? What is the right compressor? Yeah, I'm using all the wrong words here. There's, no, I mean, that's that's like pretty dead on. There's, there's like a few different areas of that same sort of like phenomenon Mm -hmm. in in my brain um where one would be yeah like with compressors uh that's a big thing like there's uh there's always these nerds that know like every type of compressor you know they know Mm -hmm. what kind of an 1176 is and a la2a and like a fucking like ssl like who cares like i i don't know any of that shit like yeah and then, you know, there's all these like courses on that you can dive into of like how to hear compression. How do you, how fast or slow do you want your attack and your release? Like it makes everything sound different. There's all these settings on all these different types of compressors and compression is like vital to any audio like period, you know, like whether you know it or not. So like I don't that, know it, but... that just being one instance, like these vocals are going to be compressed. Oh, that they, they will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I use the compressor you know. in my chain because you told me to, yeah. I don't know what it does. But I do use <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, it just makes shit sound more pro, yeah. you know, but, yeah. but some there, there is like a, an Avenue, there's a rabbit hole for you to go down mm-hmm. of what compressor should you use? Yeah. Um, what attack should you have? What release should you have? What ratio should, should it be two to one, four to one, eight to one, 20 to one? Do we want to limit it? You know, like there's all this shit to understand. And like, um, I tell one of my buddies, Kyle, 
uh, Erosh, because uh, he's like kind of a guru with that kind of shit. Like he just really knows how to like, oh, it needs to sound like this. Like let's throw this on there and set it like this. I'm like, that's crazy, man. <laughs> like I don't know how you know that shit. Like I yeah. kind of get it, but um, yeah, definitely like kind of get overwhelmed. Uh, and that's just like literally one instance of that. I mean, sometimes I'll go down the rabbit hole of like music theory when it comes yep. to writing stuff. So that's kind of similar to like color theory, I guess, mm -hmm. for you, sure. yeah. um, where it's like, you know, I'm working on these songs and I'm not looking at a rule book while I do it. And it's all kind of stuff I've learned. But then, um, you know, like I'll just Google some nights, like what's the saddest chord progression or what's the saddest combination of, of notes, um, you know, to trigger a certain emotional response. And then you'll get way into that. And you're just like, I know nothing. I don't have a fucking clue what's going on here. I know a couple of chord pr progressions and like, a, you know, I tried my best to like make this sound sad, but there's, yeah. there's so much to learn that it definitely gets overwhelming. And like, so yeah, whether it be like theory, um, compressors, fucking guitar tone, snare tone. I mean, that's the popular one with, with like engineers and producers is like your snare sounds like shit. So it's like, there's always chasing something and realizing how little you know because I, of how much more there is to know. I think the interesting part is that none of those things is songwriting. And for me, none of those things is storytelling or filmmaking, yeah. which is so weird of like, yeah, we spend so much time <coughs> on the color theory and it, ultimately none of that matters if I can't create a shot that is visually interesting. Yeah. And if you can't write a song that people want to listen to, then no one cares what the snare sounds like. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's it's such a hard balance to find of like, yeah, how much studying of the technique do I do and how much do I just trust my gut and accept that what's gotten me here is going to keep getting me to the next right. place. Uh, and that's a place I have trouble with of like, yeah, and there's, there's the rule of thirds. Everything's supposed to be on this grid and it's supposed to be one of four points on the screen. And it's like, I don't like that, though. I kind of want to put it here. <laughs> I don't uh, even know what the fuck that is. A rule of thirds. Uh, yeah, what it's is a, that? It's a principle of composition, of frame composition. Put him on the spot here. Now I'm like, <laughs> fuck, do I actually know what this thing is? Welcome uh, to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. I'm the expert on everything here. Um, no, it's like, a, if you imagine like the, the frame and then divide into a grid of thirds. So it's yeah, like a piece of paper that you fold into thirds, mm. like a menu kind of yeah. thing. Um, so you do that vertically and horizontally, you end up with two lines, vertical and horizontal. Yeah. You can kind of visualize that. And then in theory, the points of interest in the frame are where those lines intersect. Interesting. I would uh, think it'd be in like the middle square. That's for like a, a very like dry and not dry, very like very personal. Uh, that's very like an interview. If I was like, yeah, if you were interviewing someone very formally, if it was like a... Um, like night show, TV night shows, that kind mm -hmm. of thing where it's very centered. Um, but yeah, anything dramatic or cinematic is generally off to a third somewhere or vertical or horizontally. It's like the horizon is normally either kind of at the bottom or kind of at the top. It's not usually, you're not supposed to be in the dead center of the frame. <coughs> um, but even like, yeah, there's, those are all rules that are all broken all the time and yeah. they are great to be aware of. And yeah, but but if all I do is create by. stuff on this grid, then yeah, what have I yeah. done? If all you do is create stuff in the core progressions that are in the textbooks, then what have you done? Right. Um, and I think that's a hard, hard thing to grapple with is figuring out how much to break the rules and when, when that's an option. Yeah. Uh, and then in our space, it's also like, when is the client okay with breaking the rules? Like I kind of know these principles and I kind of know what a song should be or a video should be. Um, I want to take this risk. I think I want to violate this principle he might not <laughs> I feel like it might not feel right to them and so that's always a weird thing of like yeah taking the chance and trusting that they're also gonna appreciate the chance you took in the same way that you intended it uh, yeah. and i assume it's a similar thing in audio of like i want to write this weird part <clears throat> but i don't actually know yeah um i think it's interesting um it's definitely easier to take chances with somebody else's art <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. uh that's that was interesting. that was one of the um the things that really uh it's kind of why I've taken this long to like start self producing our own mm -hmm. stuff uh like so I told you I started with like uh working with Drew Ray and then from there we went to Brian Hood which shout out his podcast um and then from there we started working with my homie Kyle Odell 
and um, and then we brought Josh Landry into that too, and that was when I was like, okay, I see what's going on here. Like this is really cool with you know how they're doing it, and um, just from conversations with them, one of the things I picked up on was that it's really hard to produce, let's see, like produce or I guess like maybe in your case like make your own music video because you care so damn much. So like you don't want to fuck anything up. You want it to all be perfect. But with someone else's music. There's a little bit, like as bad as it sounds, there's a little bit of like, I don't give a fuck about mm. your project. It's not mine. So yeah. like, um, you're willing to try different things and try like some things that you maybe wouldn't have if it was your own. Um, and then those risks are what pay off, you know, um, where yeah. there's definitely something for, you know, just playing it safe and like vanilla ice cream is great, but sometimes like you try something weird, like mixing uh fucking um, al almonds or like whatever the fuck Tom Brady eats uh my king, avocado my ice cream you know and then He's it's doing like great. Everything's I guess fine. that's a was a great idea you know that somebody <laughs> everything he does is a great idea that's that's different yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to derail this whole you thing know. <laughs> <laughs> just get into the Saints versus Tom Brady I'm Here a lifelong Buccaneers fan that's what this whole podcast has been about yeah me too just me and Tampa going way back dude um but yeah you touched on that you're self-producing now so how's that journey been I think Oh, uh, sorry. I'm, it's interesting that you talk about working on someone else's stuff versus your own stuff. Uh, because to me, I think I've once or twice I've worked as something for myself. And almost always it's for someone else. Uh, and definitely that makes it easy to take a risk um, in the sense of like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this to help you. And it's like, there's not the personal tie to it that makes everything so messy and complicated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it is easier to kind of separate yourself and separate your anxiety from that decision yeah. and just trust that it's creatively correct. Whereas, yeah, when it's your own thing, it's like, yeah, there are infinite <coughs> all the possibilities and yeah, all the self-conscious bullshit that gets mixed up in right. that creative process. Um, I don't know. It's a weird time, but you mentioned you are self-producing the hollow city stuff. You got a new hollow city stuff coming out. How are you feeling about that? Um, when is this going to come out? It's a good question. Very soon, actually. So okay. maybe the better question is how the singles been and how has that <laughs> the, been going? The, the singles have been cool. Um, and those we, were produced by you as well, We correct? got one more. Yeah, so we well, we co-wrote those with Josh Landry. Um, it was kind of just all of us, you know, sitting in a room with him and just writing songs. And then um, so we got one more of those to uh, to release on November 30th. So that's like, that's <laughs> let's see two weeks <laughs> checks the hand tattoo yeah. <laughs> uh, a little under two weeks from now That's news which to me. i don't know when this will really yeah didn't tell you that no yeah. no i knew it was so happening at some point that'll be yeah uh, that'll be the third and final one of the three song single perfect um and honestly dude i just can't wait to get to the new shit yeah like the this has been like a, a nice way for us to kind of jump back into the the world of being a band because mm -hmm. uh, we've been dormant for ever um a lot it, of it's been work. fun obviously like we did all the music videos with you and i uh, got to work with josh who's one of our best friends one of my best friends um but Papa yeah, josh, just, dude, just, shout out him. just just excited to like get to the, the I, don't, I don't know what it what it is like this year a switch turned on and i just got super passionate about like writing and producing our own stuff so i think it's some of the coolest shit that we've done so I'm just really excited to get oh, yeah. to get to that, you know. That's a good good rhythm to be in. I think uh, I, I've come to accept there's always the highs and the lows, and it's fun to accept the high and recognize when it's like, oh, I'm at the top right now. Yeah, let's let's yeah. suck this all up. Yeah. Don't um, know how long it's going to last. The pendulum will swing. <laughs> there's, something, uh, there's something I love about the swing of the pendulum, though, because like, when it's up, it all feels good, and then it, it all hits you in the face again and makes you hungry and makes you go back to square one. And there's yeah. something fun about like you never start over obviously you're getting better all the time like it is probably more linear than it feels in some ways um but i don't know there is something fun about that moment of like wait do i actually suck at this let's <laughs> let's re-examine every part of this <laughs> and check out everything and see yep. no um, i hate that it's not fun at all <laughs> you need it though oh i hate it that's the old imposter syndrome that's a huge fear of mine is yeah. like uh, like genuinely, like it's not just like joking or talking out of my ass. It's like I have this massive fear that I'm really bad at what I do, 
but all of my friends are too nice to tell me. So like that's that is, that's a like a very real thing. Like <laughs> that's I, I, just, I just keep on plugging away yeah. and doing what I'm doing. I'm like, man, I hope they don't sit behind me and like, like God, I really wish Zach would fucking <laughs> stop this shit. Dude. That song is the worst thing I ever heard. <laughs> yeah, I think the only good advice there is that you have to go off of like actual metrics. So it's like if people have continued to come to you for songs, then you're doing well at it. If well, I think they're just even dumber. <laughs> Maybe true, but if you live in a world where everyone is that dumb, who can I sucker today? Uh, yeah, no, there is. Uh, I think, I think it was from Brian Hood. I think it was somewhere from that Six Figure Creative podcast. Someone said something to the effect of like, uh, <coughs> "Fuck, I would do this for free, but you can never tell anyone about it." Was that the right quote that I wanted to pull out? No, it wasn't. <laughs> we we're just talking about something. It's literally written on my desk, and I can like see the sticky note. And it went perfectly with what you're saying. Um, that's okay. You call your roommate or your, your cat. Oh, dude. Tell them to look real quick. I'm curious what this quote is. Yeah, now. me too. I need to cut for a second. <laughs> um, what were you just saying before that? Brian Hood, the, imposter syndrome. Like um, being scared that all my friends are not telling me that I'm not, really bad at what yeah. I do. I have absolutely no idea. Okay, we're back. It's okay. My brain just totally <laughs> offline there. We're trying. Uh, my desk is like a mess of sticky notes. My friends always make fun of me for it because it's just, I don't know. It's how I it's how I organize myself and I am big on writing down little motifs that are important to me. I love that. Um, me too, but not in this moment when I can't <laughs> think of them. I um, forgot to take the sticky notes with like, you. Oh, I'd be a mess. I need a bigger suitcase for that. But, cool. I think we're we're probably about good. We're at, yeah, we're over half an hour. So I'm happy with that, my guy. Are we done? We didn't even get into fucking Drew Brees versus Tom Brady. I, I mean, it's technically probably still rolling at this point. I probably would have cut out that part of me trying to remember what the hell that quote was that I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is going to be if I forget to cut that out uh, and just leave in like just <laughs> two minutes of dead air of just me sitting here silently staring at the floor. Um, it wouldn't be the craziest thing I've ever done, though. Um, but... Uh, my last question I'd like to end on is what's next? So where are you going? So we've done audio production. Um, is audio production in the context of metal music where you would like to stay? Is there a, is scoring a movie interesting to you? Is there other genres of music that are interesting? <coughs> is it interesting to only be a vocal producer or a mastering engineer? Yeah. What, what is the, I wish, the I wish I could say, honestly, that's a fear too. It's like, I, I don't know. My home base is like, metal and um like just aggressive music but uh, these country bands keep mm -hmm. hitting me up and i mean and now you're doing a video for one of them <laughs> so yes. <laughs> um yeah i keep kind of like slipping into this country niche mm -hmm. is it niche or niche i think niche i've always said niche but i feel like i'm getting bullied into saying niche but yeah so i feel like the the country world is like taking me in a little bit and um not sure how I feel about that there's like a few of my guys that like I love to just hang out with them and work on stuff with them but um I don't know it's like I'll do whatever as long as I'm fulfilled but uh it kind of always comes back to aggressive music I would love to score movies but that's mm -hmm. um I have no idea how to be Hans Zimmer, but I sure love watching yeah. and learning anything I can from any kind of content with him. So, yeah. um, that would be a dream, but it kind of feels like probably should have started looking into that like 10 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> always, know? I always use sports as my reference of like, uh, I would love to get into filming or photographing sports at some point in time. I think it'd be really cool, yeah. but it's so far off of what I'm doing that it's just not something I can invest time and energy into right, right now. Uh, so I think it's kind of fun to have that down the road as like, as a 50 year old project of like, if I, yeah. <laughs> if I get old and bored in this, then that's something else to experiment with. So maybe that's the same thing with cinema of like, yeah, at some point you'll have written all the songs possible by 45 years old and we yeah. tired of writing about heartbreaks and be ready for something else to happen <laughs> in life. Yeah. I won't be sad anymore. So I won't know what the fuck to write about. <laughs> Don't get too arrogant. <laughs> 
We can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, we can only hope we find that piece at the end of, <laughs> the end of all the bullshit and self-doubt. Um, well, my guy, thank you. I appreciate your time. Uh, where can people follow you online? Where can people find Hollow City? What should people look out for? At Hollow City Band on everything and at Hollow Zach with a K, not Fine. an H. Um, and I don't know. It's fucking new music. <laughs> happening at some point. Be, I think new music, new. Be, I think it'll be out before the next single is. Uh, maybe I can try and time them around the same time. That's probably a better idea. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the world happens. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see when it be. Cool. Tight. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Bro, I, do- I want that quote so bad. <laughs>